and now we have a great chest movement. It's a dumbbell press. It's a combination of three different movements on the floor with a limited range of motion. And you might say, why limited range of motion? Well, the best way I can describe to you is the muscles get used to the same thing. So in the past, we've talked about the benefits of going really deep and getting a really good stretch on your dumbbell presses. Well, that's great and it's probably ideal and the one that you'd wanna use the majority of the time, but the muscles get used to the same thing and they will not grow, they will not change if you do the best movement in the world consistently. So this is a great option. That's another reason why limited range of motion exercises can be very effective when you throw them in occasionally to give yourself a break from the movements that you are doing on a consistent basis. Now one thing here um, that's very, very important is getting in and out of position to do the exercise. It can be very dangerous on your rotator cuff. So this is the technique that I found works best. I'm using 50 pound dumbbells. If you're just starting out with this, try 25 or 30s. Um, and then 45 to 50 gets really heavy. For you big boys who feel really secure, maybe you can work yourself up to 60, 70, and 80 in the future. But you are a little bit stronger with this movement because your shoulder capsule is so supported by the floor. So you just want to sit down in between the two dumbbells. Going to put them up on your thigh. The first one's really easy. Put them on the thigh close to the knee. And then you just bring your feet up. And then so the dumbbells are really close to you. You just pin your elbows tight to your side, very important. And then you lean back and the, the arms are already straight. So you just go from here to your top position right here. I like the legs bent a little bit like this. It helps that lower back get nice and flat on the floor. Try to take that curve out of that lower back. Okay, now typical dumbbell press. Lightly tap the upper arm and elbow on the floor. Exhale. Drive that thumb a little bit higher. Separate them. Bring the pinky a little bit higher coming down. Lightly tap, pause, and then let that air out. Separate them. Breathing in. Really, we'll be able to put your mind in the chest muscles. Breathing in. I'll do one more. Breathing in. Separate them down nice and slow. Best way to end this one is put them right on the knees, bring the knees up, and then set right up. Okay, this wasn't really heavy enough for me to get to failure in the proper rep range. First set, 15 reps. Second set, 12. Uh, so I just wanted to end the set quickly. But after you end your set, you're going to rest for about 30 seconds, and then you're going to lean right back, and you're going to go into the second phase of this movement, and that is a fly. Okay, now the 50 pounds on the fly will definitely be more challenging for me. You want to keep your arms relatively stiff, almost straight. Your upper arm and your elbow is going to touch on the floor lightly. Ah. Keep those arms nice and stiff. Imagine you're wrapping your arms around a big oak tree. Breathing in, lightly tap, exhale. Ah. With this fly, you have the, the uh, uh, same choices that you have with the, the, the dumbbell flies we've showed you before. You can bring your pinkies towards each other to work that chest in a different head. You can keep the dumbbells square to each other. Keep those arms nice and stiff. Or you can go from a fly into a press. Now turn the thumbs in towards each other. That's a fly to a press. When you're done, make sure you just don't throw the dumbbells on the floor. Bring the thighs up and sit right back up. So that's the second phase of the tri set. You want about 30 seconds rest in between each set. Typically, most people can definitely uh, press more weight than they fly. So for me, uh, a good choice for the press would be 60 or 65. Get to failure around 12 to 15 reps, rest a half a minute, and then lighten it up to go at about 45 pounds for the fly. So take about 20 pounds less for your second movement to fly than you do the press. Within 30 seconds, get right into your dumbbell, uh, put your dumbbells on the floor, tilt them in a little bit like that, and we're just gonna do a nice slow set of push-ups. Keep the, the buns nice and low so your body's a nice straight board plank, push your elbows apart. <sighs> Make sure the dumbbells are wide enough so your chest can fit, and your sternum can go all the way down towards the floor. Push your elbows out to the sides. <sighs> Breathing in. <clears throat> nice and slow. When you're done, just bring one knee up to come out of it. 
couple things about the push-ups using the dumbbells like this is it's actually ideal because your wrist is nice and straight and it's not compromised versus traditional way that we put our hand on the floor, our wrist is bent and tends to um, be a little bit more weak. So keeping our wrist straight using the dumbbell, dumbbell handles is a really nice advantage. Second thing is make sure you kick those elbows out to the side because if you do a push-up and you take the elbows back behind you, there's nothing wrong with that, but it works the chest a little bit less and it works the triceps a little bit more. So in this instance, we want to take the triceps out as much as possible. And so for that reason, we want to kick those elbows out to the side and not back behind us on the way down. So there you go. There's a unique movement that you can experiment with. It's great for your chest development. It's a dumbbell press, dumbbell fly, supersetted with push-ups at the end.